29 minutes after the hour, State Senator Wayne Kuypers was elected to the Michigan Senate in 2002 and again in 2006 after two terms in the House of Representatives. He represents the 30th District of Michigan, Ottawa County, Granville, Sparta, in Kent County, and he's on the other end of our line this morning. He is running for Congress, wants to replace Pete Hoekstra, who has decided not to run again. Instead, he's running for Governor of Michigan. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Michael Patrick. How are you? Good. How's the uh, campaign going so far? How do you like your chances as we get now? What are we, only uh, 25 days left till that August 3rd primary? And by all accounts, whoever wins that primary in West Michigan is going to be the next United States congressman because it's a decidedly Republican district. Well, that is true, and uh, it's a full field. You know, I'm, uh, I'm used to running in full primaries, but I've never run in a primary with this many people in it. Yeah. So it, uh, it certainly brings some interesting dynamics to the race, but uh, I believe we're doing well. Uh, we're getting great response as we go out into communities and do our door-to-door work. Um, I'm very hopeful that uh, August 3rd is going to be a good day for us. Um, do you have any idea? Do you do polling or anything like that? Um, there are polls that are done by independent groups. We, uh, we have done uh, one or two uh, over the course of uh, the last, six months, and uh, in each of those polls, the, the numbers uh, looked very good for us. We had actually, in the more recent poll, expanded the lead a little bit. So, um, But again, polls are just snapshots in time. They give you a sense of where voters are at at a particular point in time, and so um, I don't put a lot of stock in polls one way or the other. The only poll I really care, care about is the poll on August 3rd. Have you been knocking on doors, uh, literally, with that kind of uh, grassroots campaigning? Absolutely, yep. We, uh, we target certain areas and go in with a group of people, myself included, and uh, knock on doors, introduce ourselves to people, um, and uh, then move on to the next community. So it gives me a chance to, uh, to hear from voters right on their doorstep. What is and, the strangest uh, uh, thing that you've heard from a voter, the strangest occurrence that's happened? I imagine if you knock on enough doors, you're going to have some uh, curious situations. The, well, <laughs> the strangest occurrence, I, I don't know that, that I've uh, necessarily had a strange occurrence. I think what I'm, what I'm sensing from voters more than anything else is a real anger and fear at what's been happening in Washington. Um, you know, people have a gut instinct that the way Congress has been spending over the last uh, decade or two um, is uh, is not the right approach to take. I mean, they, they know it instinctively. And so, you know, as I come to the doorstep, uh, their first question is, what are you going to do to control this spending? Yeah. And, uh, and I think I have a pretty good track record of doing that as a as a member of the Michigan Senate, we've uh, we've had our share of uh, dealing with tough budgets, and uh, we've made some pretty uh, pretty difficult and drastic cuts in some areas of state government. So, you know, I feel like uh, like I have some experience in doing that, and I'm going to take that experience and put it to work in Washington. Okay, we'll be in touch again as we get closer. I know every minute counts when you're in a primary that will likely determine who will be the next United States congressman to uh, fill the seat occupied by Congressman Pete Hoekstra for so long. I think it's been, what, 16 years now. And when you think about the fact that you have two congressional seats in the uh, West Michigan area open at the same time, Vern Ehlers, of course, deciding to retire, it's almost an astonishing occurrence. And uh, so two new faces, one of them could be Wayne Kuyper is the Republican state senator. Rich Kincaid, the president of the Detroit Sports Broadcasters Association, had to be amused yesterday when uh, he turned on ESPN and watched an hour-long special in which LeBron James told everyone he's going to Miami, to South Beach, he said, and he hadn't even told Dan Gilbert, the uh, owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, about his decision. Welcome to Miami, Rich Kincaid. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Did you read this uh, letter from uh, Dan Gilbert to uh, actually to Cleveland Cavaliers fans everywhere? I mean, my goodness, this is unbelievable. He uh, he uh, refers to uh, uh, LeBron's signing with Miami as, quote, a cowardly betrayal. Mm-hmm. And here's my favorite part. All caps, in quotation marks, I personally guarantee that the Cleveland Cavaliers will win an NBA championship before the self-titled former King wins one, end quote. Then you can take it to the bank. Here's an odd line. Some, Gilbert writes, some people think they should go to heaven but not have to die to get there. 
I'm not uh, sure exactly what that means. Gilbert writes of a shocking act of disloyalty from our homegrown chosen one who sends the exact opposite lesson of what we would want our children to learn. And uh, wow. he also talks about a curse on Cleveland, Ohio, which he says that LeBron will be taking south with him. He says, mm. quote, but the good news in this heartless and callous action can only serve as the antidote to the so-called curse on Cleveland, Ohio. The self-declared former king will be taking the curse with him down south. This stuff's insane. So, I mean, you know, owners trade players all the time at a whim, and now the shoe's on the other foot. Dan Gilbert, he doesn't like it too much. Uh, 30 seconds. How do you think Tom Izzo feels today? Pretty, pretty good. You know, I mean, I was just uh, almost literally, uh, I just don't think it's important enough to bring to God in prayer, but uh, I was almost uh, praying that Izzo wouldn't take this job. I, uh, Dan Gilbert, uh, this is not the kind of guy uh, you want to work for. This guy's just a nut. I mean, saying that uh, he's going to guarantee that his team without LeBron James will win a championship uh, before LeBron James does, uh, you know, this guy's, uh, this guy's crazy. He's out there. Uh, Tom Izzo made the right choice, thank goodness. Rich Kincaid, president of Detroit Sports Broadcasters, pulling no punches this morning indeed, and we'll talk again soon. 35 after the hour, LeBron James, Miami. Welcome to Miami. Welcome to Miami. Yo, I heard the rainstorms ain't nothing to mess with, but I can't feel a drip on the strip. It's a trip, ladies.